Hello and thank you for joining me. I do hope you're all keeping well during these really weird times that we're all going through. Just unbelievable really, isn't it? Just, we've never seen anything like this. I do believe that we are past the peak. So hopefully before too long, we can all start going back to some kind of normality in our lives. So fingers crossed. Anyway, whilst we are in lockdown, I thought I'd shoot this little video because it has been suggested to me before, but I was really against the idea. Not because it was a bad idea, but it just wasn't really something I thought about doing. But whilst we are in lockdown now, I just thought, well, why not? So, thank you Ollie for that suggestion. Ollie comes from my old neck of the woods down south, and he has his own YouTube channel. It's called Walks with Ollie, so there's a clue in the name there. He does some great walks, so please do check his channel out. I've put the link in the description below. So. Thank you again, Ollie. So what I'm going to talk about is the equipment I use for when I go out filming. So I'm just going to talk about the camera, really. The camera I use, the tripod, and I might just talk a little bit about the video editing software that I use. So first we'll just look at the camera. Okay, so the camcorder I use is a Sony HDR CX450. And it's a great camcorder. I've had this for nearly two and a half years now. Um, I bought it in Argos for about 220 quid at the time, and that was well within my budget. I couldn't really afford to sort of spend any more money on a camcorder, but I didn't need to because this does everything I want and more really, so it just shoots good quality footage and good sound. So, it comes with a battery, but the batteries aren't great because for the sort of work I'm doing, bearing in mind I'm going out all day filming, these batteries really they only sort of last an hour, if that. So what I ended up doing was I bought a battery which actually gives you much longer power. So this one I think lasts about six hours, or it says six hours, but I actually can get this working for when I'm out all day. So if I'm doing like a film that takes me six hours to do, which is the norm, six to seven hours, this battery will keep me going for that day's filming. It's great. So, again, what I'll do is I'll put all the links to this stuff in the video description below. So, okay, so that's the battery. Now, you may be thinking, why has this guy got pink sponge stuck on his camera? Well, <laughs> it's a windshield for the microphone. So, what I ended up doing, basically, was just getting a piece of kitchen sponge, cutting it up like this, and then just sticking it on with some tape. That's all it was. Now the reason I had to do it like this is because if you buy windshields for microphones, they look like this, which don't fit on the actual mic that comes with this camcorder. Now this mic under the sponge is like a half moon shape. So obviously that windshield ain't gonna be any good at all. So that's why I had to make my own really out of this piece of sponge. And it does it does the job, it does it more than adequately. These basically are fine for the older camcorders which have like a microphone on top, so you can just stick it on top. Um, so I had to make it up really with this one. But if anybody out there knows how to get hold of a, a, a mic windshield that will sort of cover this kind of mic, please let me know because I've never been able to find one. So anyway, the footage that's captured by the camcorder, it's all on an SD card. It's a micro SD card, and basically it, you can put 64 gigabytes of footage on there. It's amazing on such a small thing. The only thing I will say is that, bearing in mind it's so small and flimsy, it's easy to lose them. So what I always do is I make sure that before I go out for a day's filming, I make sure that it's all in there, all ready to go, because if you try and change one round when you're out, and you're in windy conditions or whatever, you really have got a real risk of losing the damn thing. So, because what you do, if you, if you, if you, it, it just pops out like this. Very easy to lose it. So, just do it all before you go out. That's what I find. So, like most standard camcorders now, it comes with an LCD screen. Now, these screens are fine. They have their advantages and their disadvantages. The advantages, of course, you can see the picture you're trying to shoot. And of course, 
while I'm stood in front of the camera, taking a shot of myself, talking to the camera, I can see myself in the frame to make sure that I'm in the right position. The only disadvantage is, depending on the weather, you know, whether it's sunny or whether it's cloudy, misty, whatever, sometimes you find that it's not always that clear when you're looking through here. So sometimes you, you sort of, you've got to tilt the screen to try and get the best picture that you're looking at. It's a bit of a finger in the air job really, because I often find when I come back from a day shooting that some of my pictures will look like I've took them at, at an angle like that. So that's a bit of a pain in the arse. I miss those old viewfinders that used to get on the older camcorders I had. You used to have the viewfinder there and you'd just be able to look through it. They were great because they just gave you a perfect preview of what you were shooting, whereas these don't. They're okay, but they are a little bit sort of hit and miss, I find. But as I say, it's pros and cons like anything. Okay, so we'll now move on to the tripod. So the tripod is the X-Pro TR550A, and it can be used with Sony, Panasonic, Canon, lots of other types of cameras. So, you get the camera, and there's a little bit that screws into the bottom there, and then that just sort of slots into there at the top. There's like a, a lock mechanism there, just keeps it firmly in. Now this is a cheap model, I mean again, it was within my budget, it only cost me about 17 quid. Um, handle broke off it, <laughs> not long after I bought it. This handle was basically used to wind this up and down. But, you know, even though the handle broke off, it's no big deal, I can still just pull that up and down like that, and then just use that to tighten it into position. But it's nice and light, I mean, bearing in mind that I'm carrying this with me all day when I'm doing my filming, when I'm doing a walk. I don't want anything too heavy, so this is great. The only thing that I do find is obviously when it's windy, um, and I found that recently when I did the Malvern Hills last year, because it is so light, and the camera's light, when you do put it on top, when it gets windy, it sort of does that. So, that can be a bit of a problem. I, mean, I know in the end when I was at the Malvern Hills, I just had to sort of hold the camera like that when I was filming myself sometimes, because I couldn't leave it on its own. But what you can do, or what I've done, um, there's a hook on the bottom here, so that hook can be used just to sort of like hang something on, just to weigh it down. So, when I've been carrying like my maps and stuff in my rucksack, I usually put them in a plastic bag, just in case it rains, to sort of protect them from the, from the wet. So, I use the plastic bag with all the books inside, or whatever, and then I'll just put them on here and it just weighs it down a bit better, it makes it a bit firmer. So that's great for those shots where I leave the camera and I walk away and walk past again. So that's pretty good. So another thing I ended up buying was the Sony Ultra Compact case for Handycam. Now this, this is great because what you can do, the camera, even with the bigger battery that I bought separately, all fits in there quite nicely. And you can just zip that up like that. So it gives you a bit of, bit of protection when you're not using the camera. And then in here, I put all the SD cards. So basically all the SD cards which go in their adapter. So when you've captured all your footage at the end of the day, the adapter you just plug into the computer to transfer all your footage over. That all goes in there nicely, so it's all nice and compact. So that fits really nicely in my rucksack. Okay, so once I'm home after a day filming, I then transfer all the captured footage onto my computer, and then I can edit it up. So the software I've used is Avid Studio, and this is brilliant. It does more than I need it for, really, but all I want to do is just edit my scenes, add narration, add music, add titles on top. Um, now and again I've used special effects, but not really much, to be fair. But this can do all that and more, so this suits my needs adequately. There's more up-to-date software than this, but this has kept me going for some years now. Okay, so when you open the software, you've got three tracks. Now you can add as many tracks as you like. You know, there's no limit. So if you find that you want to keep adding and adding stuff, just keep adding more tracks. So 
basically these tracks are for you to put your footage on, all the captured footage, and then you edit your scenes on it, shorten your scenes, whatever. Okay, um, and then the tracks below, if you want to add narration, you put them on the track below. Music as well goes on the track below. Now, if you want to add titles, they have to go on the track above, because whatever is on the first track will be superimposed over the footage. If you put the titles on one of the tracks below the video footage, you won't be able to see the title, so that's why it goes on to track one. But it's a great bit of software, I've never had any problems with it, it's great. And that's it. That's what I use for doing all my filming and editing, so I hope that's been of use to some people. Anyway, thanks again to Ollie for the suggestion, and please do all keep well and stay safe. Bye for now.